you're like most people, you think that mortgage interest rates are determined by the Federal Reserve. And whenever the Fed meets, they are the ones that move interest rates up or down. Well, that couldn't be more false. Did you know mortgage interest rates change daily just like a price of a stock would? And I'm gonna show you how real quick on how you can really understand a very complex situation very, very easily. So let's get started. Let's just say we have an interest rate and that interest rate is at 2.5% for a 30-year loan. What happens is that interest rate is backed by a mortgage-backed security. And these mortgage-backed securities are sold to investors. These investors say, hey, I'm willing to give $10 million to collect 2.5% interest out per year. Now, what happens is, is as other asset classes start to gain in value, people don't want to necessarily lend out their money at 2.5% when they can better take that money and let's say invest in corporate bonds or invest in other currencies or other asset classes that are offering a very safe but yet higher rate of return. So let's say investors start and they say, mm, I don't know if I really wanna be investing at two and a half percent. I personally really want a little bit more interest. What happens is these securities that are trading on the open market, nobody starts to buy them. And what happens when nobody starts to buy them, they have to raise the rate of interest to entice investors back into the market. So what will happen is, is let's say a 2.5% 30-year fixed interest rate is trading at the price of 100. What that means is anything below 100 means that that market interest rate is below the market. Anything above 100 means if you take that interest rate, the investor, not only are they gonna be collecting the two and a half percent, but they also get a little bit of money up front. So let's say nobody wants to buy a two and a half percent 30 year fixed interest rate. China isn't wanting to buy our debt. Nobody out there is wanting to buy the debt. Only the United States government is willing to buy these mortgage backed securities. Well, let's say the United States government can't buy them forever. And it gets to a point where you need other buyers. And so what happens is, is interest rates slowly move up. And maybe the very next day, instead of two and a half percent on that interest rate, somebody says, you know what? I don't wanna not get any money up front for lending out two and a half percent. I want, I'm willing to lend out two and a half percent, but I want a little bit of upfront money, right? So I say, nope, not gonna do that. I'm not gonna buy it. Well, what happens is then it comes to the market and they say, hey, okay, you know what? The rate will be two and a half percent on a 30 year fixed loan, but you got to give me 1% of a loan amount up front as a fee on top of the two and a half percent I'm going to be collecting per year. So then that interest rate, not the rate doesn't go up, but the cost to get that interest rate goes up. So now that person, AKA the bank that is making that loan has to give the investor 1% of a loan amount. So let's say that's on a $400,000 loan. That means in order for that bank to offer a 2.5% interest rate to that customer, they now have to pay that back-end investor 1%. So that means they're not gonna pay that. They don't have the money to be able to do that. What do they have to do? They have to pass that on to who? The client, right? So even though interest rate didn't go up, the cost for that interest rate went up. Now. This number was exaggerated, meaning an interest rate doesn't move or change by 1% fee every day, but it does change every day. And what causes that price to change every single day is the appetite for those mortgage-backed securities and the buyers. If there's more people needing mortgage loans than less people wanting to buy those assets, they got to incentivize those investors by increasing either the interest rate or the fee that is able to cause them to say, yeah, let me get some of those mortgage, right? So what typically happens within a day is those will go up or down within maybe 10% of this number. So let's say a $400,000 loan may go up or down in cost about $400 a day, right? Now what happens is the more that we see other asset classes start to gain in value and investors view those as safe assets. For example, 
Now we start seeing, let's say, corporate bonds, meaning America, a big company in America says, hey, we're raising some capital. We're willing to pay you 3% on anything you invest. Well, those investors that are buying those mortgage loans are like, hey, you know what? Those corporate bonds are looking pretty good. I'm not going to be buying as much mortgage backed securities in the United States. And so every day that price goes up or down. So if we get a lot of days in a row where there's not a lot of buyers of those mortgage backed securities, we start seeing price worsen, meaning the amount of money banks have to give that investor to entice them back. So what that investor gives that bank is another option. They say, Hey, we'll give you two and a half percent interest rate for 30 years. And you got to give us 1% of a loan amount as a fee because we no longer are willing to offer our money at that rate. Or we'll give you 2.75%. We'll lend you that money out that you can lend to your clients and you don't have to pay us any money in that. And that is how interest rates go up. Now this was an exaggerated example, but this is exactly what occurs. So I hope that gave you a little bit better of a perspective on how mortgage interest rates work and they're not actually dictated by the bank. The free market out there, capitalism and what investors are willing to pay or accept as a yield for lending out money is what determines mortgage interest rates.